Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bants. As always, I am your host, The Bants. And here we are once again, the beginning of another week, another Tuesday. I hope you are enjoying your week so far. And hopefully to add to that, it is time for our first What's Happening in Fashion for the week. So let's just get right into it. And first up, of course, we have our headlines for the day. And in our first headline of the day, let's talk about another new boutique opening up in LA very soon. And that is, of course, the newest H. Lorenzo boutique. For those of you who don't know, H. Lorenzo is definitely one of the more legendary boutiques in LA. Having already existed now for over three decades, it's definitely one of the more high-end boutiques, but definitely still very varied in the different brands they carry. Even now, we see them carrying such a wide variety of different genres. It's really just insane. Everything from popular brands such as Midnight Studios and Gosha Rubchinsky to more crazy brands such as a Capital or a June J, and even those more high-end artisanal avant-garde brands such as Label Under Construction or even MA+. So if that isn't a wide enough variety for you, then I couldn't possibly tell you what is. But now what we're getting to see is the opening of a brand new location from them, just a few doors down from their original location. And the most exciting thing about this is that it's entirely and completely a menswear store. And it really just goes to show once again how much of a driving force in menswear and men's fashion has become in the last decade or so. I mean, we have stores now that are opening up that are catering exclusively to menswear. We have this store right here from H. Lorenzo, and we just recently also had the Comme des Garcons man store open up in Nordstrom's Manhattan. It's really crazy to see, because if you had told me this a decade ago that there would be exclusive men's stores like this opening up, selling more than just tailored suits, I definitely would have called you crazy, but now seeing how much it's evolved into where it's at now, I definitely couldn't be happier. So I just want to give kudos here to H. Lorenzo, not only for their success over the many years and decades they've been around, but also for taking the bet on opening such an exclusive store such as this. And for all of you out there watching, if you happen to live in or around LA, or even if you happen to be visiting LA anytime in the future, definitely check out this store and their sister store as well. It's really incredible and definitely worth checking out if you have the time. And hold up folks, I have some breaking news for you word just came in that the newest rebranding of the Celine logo was just shown off obviously repurposed by Eddie Sleman and people are going wild over it but don't worry we will have more on this story tonight at 11 followed of course by our main headline of the day being who the fuck cares and really I don't understand why people are so up in arms about this yes he took the accent off the E big fucking deal. If there's anything anybody should be up in arms about, it's his inaugural collection. Check that shit out. What I think a lot of people don't understand, or maybe just choose to refuse to understand, is that this is no longer Phoebe's company. She's gone. She's decided to do other things. And so LVMH brought in Eddie to change up the brand, to make it different, and to evolve it into something a little bit more modern. And of course, that includes rebranding the logo as well. Now, don't get me wrong here. Do I agree with everything that's going on here? No, but I'm also probably not getting annoyed for the same reason as so many other people are when discussing this rebranding. Do I agree that Eddie should be allowed to rebrand Celine any way that he wants now that he's the head designer? Yes, absolutely. It's now his company and he can choose to rebrand it or evolve it any way that he wants. But with that said, do I think this is a good rebranding? No, absolutely not. But before we get started here, I really do think we need to address the elephant in the room, and that is that this, this isn't a logo. This is just a name. And this is the same problem that many, and I mean many, luxury fashion houses have. A name really isn't that much of a logo. 
And that isn't to say that there aren't brands out there with some kind of logo of some sort. There's of course the Louis Vuitton all over pattern as well as the Goyard all over pattern. And then there are some brands that do have a little bit of a logo. I would say Burberry is kind of stretching it. There's of course Chanel. There's also Gucci as well as of course the Gucci stripe. But when it comes down to it, a name still isn't actually a logo. It's just a typography. But now moving on to the matter at hand, why do I think this is such a bad logo? Well, because it pretty much looks the same as everybody else's logo. Yes, as I said before, I completely understand the concept of a designer or a brand wanting to evolve, wanting to become more modern. But if everybody just takes the same path, then everything just kind of feels muddled. We currently live in a time where fashion is so crazy and different and there are so many different types of styles and genres you can choose from that really the sky is pretty much the limit and this is what we get as far as a logo. Because this logo, or rather typography here, looks so much different than the newest logo from Burberry by Ricardo Tizzi, or the Chanel logo, or the Fendi logo, and the list really just goes on and on and on. I guess it just goes to show that even if somebody can be a good fashion designer, it doesn't necessarily mean they can be a good graphic designer. But in all seriousness, I'm not going out there and saying that every brand, luxury or otherwise, needs a new logo or just a logo of some sort. I know, God knows, how many people would be just absolutely crazed if any of these larger, well-known historical brands actually came out with a brand new logo after decades, if not centuries, of being around. But even so, I think designers should really put a little bit more time and effort into whatever brand they're inheriting, especially if they're trying to evolve it into something else. You can really do more than just taking the accent off an E to call your brand modern. I mean, that's just fucking lazy. But then again, so was your inaugural collection, so... Who fucking knows? But what do you guys think about all this? Do you agree with brands rebranding? Or do you think that they should continue to have that more historical look to them, especially those much older brands? Or do you feel that it's completely within the right of the designer to do what pretty much ever they want with the brand? Or maybe you're one of the extremists that actually feels that a brand should actually have a logo instead of a type head. But whatever your opinion, I'd like to know. I'd love to know what you guys think about all of this. But now, once again, with our headline is done, let's move on to our art stories for the day. And first up, Will Martyr showed off some of his newest works from his London exhibit that just recently finished, and I think these are just super well done in my opinion. The vibrance of color mixed with just the cleanliness of some of the details here, as well as some of the symmetrical aesthetics we see in some of these paintings, just work so, so well together. And if any of this sounds interesting to you, definitely look into these, some really great paintings. Then Olafur Eliason showed off some of his newest works from his exhibit currently going on in LA. And I think this is just a super interesting exhibit where the main medium used here is actually a light and this leads to some really unique concepts and ideas and if any of that sounds interesting to you definitely check out some of the photos here and the lastly Adam Lister showed off some of his works from his exhibit which will be opening tomorrow in New York City and what can you say about Lister? These are just amazing. If you're a fan of either just very heavily used geometric shapes, or even I would argue cubism to a point, definitely check out these paintings. You definitely won't be disappointed. All right, now moving back into our fashion section for the day. First up, Korean brand Post Archive Faction showed off their Fall Winter 2018 collection and as much as I want to enjoy it, I just really can't. 
you see looking over this collection here you see a lot and I mean a lot of different pieces that are heavily influenced by many other brands and designers we see a lot of pieces that feel very Raph Simmons or we see a lot of pieces with aesthetics and details that feel very helmet laying and even when it comes to the more technical pieces especially in some of those more kind of flight suit-esque pieces we've definitely seen this done by a bunch of different tech companies before although I can't really name a bunch of them off the top of my head the one that really stands out the most to me as far as influence would probably be Christopher Rayburn and even though this doesn't really surprise me because once again this is a Korean brand and really heavily influencing their ideas or even just blatant copying from other brands is pretty much their gospel I still find myself enjoying a lot of this collection. Even with as much influencing as there is here, there are some little things here and there, some little details and aesthetics that really make them stand out from just really blatant stealing. I also really like the use of so many different materials and textures here, as well as colors even if they don't always work out in my opinion. But as I said before, as much as I want to enjoy this collection, I just can't, mainly for two major reasons. One, of course, what I already talked about, even with those interesting details and aesthetics that set them apart, it is just way too heavily influenced. And two, and what seems to really be the other half of the Korean gospel of fashion, and that is just making some really, really shit quality pieces with some shit quality materials. Yes, I know. I did say earlier that I really enjoyed the amount of different materials they used here, and that is true, but it's also a very quantity over quality approach. It's interesting that they used a lot of different materials, but it's not interesting that most of those materials are shit. And really, for as much as I enjoyed these details and aesthetics on some of these pieces, it really just feels like they'll almost fall off onto the runway. They just look so terribly made, and I don't understand why so many Korean brands do this. I mean, yes, most of them don't have potential, but this one does, and it's just rather not even disappointing, but almost infuriating to see a brand that could really be polished into something great just kind of skirt by and continue to read the Korean gospel and make this instead. Then Japanese brand Youth Obey Newest showed off their Spring Summer 19 collection, and even for kind of as quirky and weird as it gets in some of these pieces, overall I have to say I enjoyed it. Going through this lookbook, we see a lot of different styles and silhouettes as well as different colors and patterns. And although individually they tend to work out very well in whatever outfit they tend to be a part of, as a collection as a whole, not so much. Then of course we have those much more really kind of weird and bizarre pieces sprinkled here and there in this lookbook. And although yes, I really do find myself enjoying some of them and finding some of them very wearable, there are definitely some that are really just a little bit too far out there. Although I'm sure somebody enjoys them, it's just it's definitely not for me. So overall, do I find this lookbook cohesive? Not in the slightest. <laughs> Nor do I think most of the pieces here are necessarily super interesting in my opinion or super wearable. But the pieces that are super interesting and are super wearable definitely make up for the lack of creativity or overabundance of creativity in some of these pieces and make for a collection or brand rather that could definitely be very interesting in the future. And finally, let's go over our articles for the day. And first up, Vogue did a very nice write-up on what they think the future holds for some of these more luxury, high-end fashion houses. 
boxes, mainly talking about obviously Demna and his work at Vetemans and Balenciaga, as well as Virgil at Louis Vuitton, and then even going over Gucci a little bit as well. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what Vogue is prophesizing for the future, I'd definitely check this out. Then the New York Times did a somewhat brief overview of some of their favorite fashion designer documentaries, giving you a little bit of a taste or introduction into some of these things or even some of the designers. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about these or possibly watching them in the future, I'd definitely check out this. And lastly, Heist and Body did a very, very brief write-up on what they consider some of their favorite German fashion boutiques. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more, I mean definitely a little bit more about the German's fashion culture or maybe just are interested in seeing a couple new fashion boutiques you haven't heard of, then I'd definitely check out this as well. Alright, and with that, we've reached the end of our first What's Happening in Fashion for the week. I hope you guys have all enjoyed, and as always, if you want to read any of the articles I talked about today, or see any images from lookbooks I wasn't able to include, I've linked everything I've talked about in the description down below. And if you are new here, then welcome. We do these What's Happening in Fashion videos twice a week at the beginning and end of the week, plus another occasional video here or there. So if you're interested, feel free to subscribe. Otherwise, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or even just want to talk fashion in general, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I am always willing to talk fashion. And thank you guys once again for watching these videos and supporting my content. I hope you all have a great rest of the week ahead of you. And as always, until next time.